grab yourself a pen, some card and some scissors because today we're doing some arts and crafts to create DIY filters for our cameras to create shaped bokeh. I'm going to uh, grab my art supplies and I'll see you in just a sec to get started. Firstly, a very Merry Christmas to you all. This video came out on Christmas Day, so I hope you're all having a really fantastic day with your family's opening presents. Maybe you got some new camera gear, maybe even an adapter look studio waiting under the tree. Uh, whether or not you're uh, done opening presents, chances are you'll have some free time to do something with the kids or the grandkids or just uh, to fill some time on your own to do some photography and maybe some arts and crafts. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be making DIY bokeh filters uh, that you can experiment with around your house using your Christmas tree lights to create some really interesting bokeh. If you didn't see our last video that came out a couple of days ago, which was five ways to create better bokeh, um, then you're going to want to go and watch that. The top tip on that was to create shaped bokeh. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to be walking you through how to make these really simple and fun little filters. So let me run you through what you're going to need to do this little DIY project. It's pretty basic uh, art supply stuff that you can get anywhere. You're going to need some scissors, you're going to need a pen, uh, you're going to need some sort of craft knife, um, something to cut on and then something to cut. What I'm going to be cutting is just some black card. Now the point of this is that it doesn't let any light through so the black card that I've got is perfect. You can use any card that you've got around that is thick enough that it won't let light through if you shine uh, some bright lights at it it's not going to leak any light through to the other side the last thing that I'm using today is going to be a Pringles tin. Now, you might have lots of these left over from snacks over uh, the past few days, um, but if you don't, you don't necessarily need this. This is one of many ways to, uh, to do this, um, but this is how I'm going to do it to create a nice, easy filter that I can pop over the front of my lens. So I'm going to uh, get started with the first step. First thing to do is to grab your Pringles tin and pop the lid off. You're then going to want to cut a hole in, in the lid uh, so that you can uh, put this over your lens. This is what's going over the end of our lens and we're going to put a little piece of card in front of that. But you don't want to be looking through this sort of hazy white plastic. Uh, it's much better to just cut a hole in the front of there. You can do that using your scissors, you can do it using a craft knife, but just a nice big hole with maybe a little rim around the edge. The next thing that you need to do is to chop the top off your Pringles can. Now I've done that just by uh, starting off with uh, the knife, popping it into the side and then going all the way around the edge with the scissors. Now the point of this is that this ring is intact so that we can take our lid now with a hole in it and pop that over the top. Uh, this is going over the end of our lens so it can sit on the lens and you can still see through the end. The next step is to make some filters to go over our little uh, our little Pringles tube here. The way that we're going to do that is to grab our card and you can see that I've already cut something out here. I'm going to take the end of our Pringles tube and my pen and I'm going to draw a circle all the way around my Pringles tube. It's a little bit hard to see on the camera here, but uh, we now have a little circle that we can easily cut out using either our craft knife or the scissors. I'm going to use the scissors just because it's a little bit quicker and easier. It doesn't have to be too neat. All it needs to do is to fit on the inside of your lid. So if you, uh, if you drew around the outside of your, uh, your Pringles tin, then it should fit quite snugly on the inside of your lid. You can now see that we have a black piece of card that will nicely fit over the end of our, uh, our Pringles tin. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, decide on my shape. I'm going to be drawing a little shape in the middle of uh, my piece of paper here and then I'm going to be cutting out the shapes that you want to go for uh, is entirely up to you and lots of different shapes will actually work. However, you want to uh, try and keep it as simple as possible because you're going to need to cut this out. 
if you're uh, if you're really good at uh, using a craft knife to uh, to cut around paper, then by all means do something quite elaborate. You can also use any kinds of cutout stamps and things like that if you have lots of uh, crafty bits and bobs at home. I'm going to uh, draw a little star on here, um, about a couple of centimeters um, in in width, just so that it's a decent size and our bokeh comes out at a decent size. The smaller your um, your cutout, the less light you're going to get through, but the smaller the bokeh and the more accurate the shape is going to be. So. I'm not a very good illustrator, uh, but I've drawn a little star on here, which I'm going to cut out using my craft knife. It's a little bit rough. You guys can spend more time on yours, um, but I think that's pretty good uh, for a demo. Now, uh, you can make as many of these as you like. Because we have our little uh, Pringles tin holder, uh, we can replace these, uh, these little filters in the holder as many times as we'd like and make a nice little collection of different sizes and shapes uh, to, to use with our bokeh. So I've just popped that back in there. I'm going to pop it onto my Pringles tin and that is it. We're ready to go. So I'm going to show you how to use this using a camera and a macro lens uh, to create some really interesting shaped bokeh. So I've set up a really quick shot here. I've got my camera sat on my tripod. It's pointing at a pine cone that is hanging from uh, this little ornament here. And then we've got the Christmas tree really far back, uh, staying consistent with those tips that we had in the last video, uh, staying nice and close to your subject with a big distance behind it so that you can get more of those lights, uh, more bokeh and bigger bokeh because it's further out of focus. So we've got a really nice shot set up and I want to start using my filters. So I'm going to start off with the star that we've just made. Uh, I'm going to pop it into our little uh, Pringles tube lid and then onto the tube itself. And then I'm going to pop that whole thing over the end of our lens. So you can see straight away that we've got uh, different shapes and it's taken a little bit of light out of that shot. You can, uh, you can rotate that so that uh, the, uh, the shapes are in a different orientation. Um, but then here's the joy of doing it this way. You can actually just pop that out, put in a different one. Uh, so let's go with a little heart that I've made, pop it back onto the Pringles tube and pop it back onto the end of your camera. Now you can see because that uh, that heart is actually a little bit smaller than our star, it's taken out a little bit more light. If I want to demonstrate that even further, I can go to an even smaller heart. So this is the difference between these two. We've got a nice big heart and a really little one. I'm going to uh, just pop this little one in here for a second demonstrate how much more light that is going to take out and how it changes our bokeh. So you can see that that bokeh is now really, really small and we would have to change our settings to uh, to compensate for that. But the bokeh is actually a little bit more, uh, it's a little sharper and those hearts are a little bit nicer. So if you are using a tripod and uh, a long shutter speed, then try and make your, your shapes nice and small and then you can compensate by um, by moving further away to make your bokeh bigger. You can up your shutter speed to keep your image nice and bright. Now, there's really no limit to what you can do with this. It doesn't have to be used for macro photography. It doesn't have to be used at Christmas. You can use this for any kind of bokeh that you come across. Uh, if you're a wedding photographer, um, just take one of these along to your wedding. Maybe a little bit of a snazzier version than mine, um, but something to shape that bokeh. And then when there are uh, fairy lights in the venue or behind the couple, you can change those to love hearts. You could change them to stars or or whatever other uh, interesting shapes that you can come up with. If you're a nature photographer and you're shooting pictures up into um, some foliage and there's light shining down through leaves, you can change the shape of that as well. 
I think particularly at Christmas, this is a really interesting project to try out. Uh, it's fun for the arts and crafts. Uh, it's only a few minutes to create these little DIY filters and you can go and try them out straight away on your Christmas tree, on your Christmas lights, on your house, or take a walk through the neighborhood and get some really cool abstract and creative shots using uh, the different colors of people's Christmas lights and the different shapes uh, that you can create using the Bokeh. Uh, this is a little bit different to the normal videos I do, um, not least because it's Christmas, um, but also because I want to know from you whether or not this is something that you would like to see more of. Put a note down in the comments if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, and most importantly, if you've gone out and tried it yourself this Christmas, or if you're watching this video later on, uh, then tell me what you use your shaped bocker on uh, throughout the rest of the year. While you're down in the comment section, make sure to give the video a like. Uh, you can consider it a Christmas present to me if you haven't already done that. Um, and subscribe if you want to see some more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration in the future. For now though guys, thank you very much for watching, a very Merry Christmas and I'll see you next time.